welcome back. Today we're doing a little bit about safety because let's be real here, we're working with hot stuff, right? So I wanna make sure that you guys are not hurting yourselves while you're doing this amazing art of wood burning. Hey Pyro, I'm Jannie Lizenby, the artist behind Red Roof Barn. I am also the founder of BurnSavvy.com where you can get all kinds of free wood burning information and your Pyro professor over at Burn Savvy Academy where you can take workshops and courses to learn how to burn like a boss. With all of that said, let's get into today's video. Tip number one, do not touch the metal when the machine is on. I know that might sound like a, uh, okay, no brainer, but there are times when I have had students in my live workshops who, like me, creep their fingers up towards the edge and then they touch it and they blister their finger and that's a really miserable experience. So just make sure that once the burner is on, don't touch the metal part. Now sometimes it's hard to tell if a burner is on and so it's tempting to just very delicately touch it, but don't do that because if it's on, you're going to get hurt. What you want to do is have a scrap piece of wood off to the side and then make sure that you are testing your burner over there, not your finger, to make sure that it's actually on hot enough. Tip number two, keep your burner away from flammable stuff. That can be kind of hard. Uh, sometimes you kind of crowd your desk with some other things. You might have some papers on there. You might have um, a cloth on there or just you put your purse down or something. You want to make sure that none of that accidentally flops on over to your burner, right? That's not a safe thing. You want to make sure that it stays away from all flammable materials. I actually had a student in my wood burning workshop who reached over her burner to get something and put a lovely new hole in her pretty sweater. And I know thumb holes, you know, those can be a trend, but I don't recommend it that way. <laughs> Tip number three, tie back everything that's loose, like hair, jewelry, headphones. Ask me how that smells. Tip number four, work on a hard surface. I know it's tempting to just chill and sit in front of a movie and just burn something. Okay, all kinds of a bad idea. First of all, don't sit on the couch, okay? If you drop your burner, it's gonna burn a hole in the couch or maybe your pant leg, okay? Number two, you're not watching your burns. No, you need to be watching your burns. Let the TV go, okay? Tip number five, secure your stand to the table. Now, if you've got a wire nib burner like this guy, that's pretty secure. You don't have to worry about that. But if you have a solid point burner, then you're going to want to secure that stand to the table, whether you tape it down or some people will screw it to a piece of wood and attach that to their desk. I don't care how you do it, but attach it, okay? If you do not, sometimes the stand can slide off the table and there goes your carpet. Tip number six, always rest your pyrography pen on the stand when it's not in use. Don't and you're gonna be sorry because if you bump it, that's gonna go right off the table and burn whatever is around you. Number seven, turn off your burner when you are not using it. Now you might think you're only leaving the table for just a minute, mm, famous last words. And just like leaving a stove on hot and unattended is dangerous, the same for your wood burning tool. Just turn it off before you go. If you gotta use the restroom, just pause, okay? Turn your burner off. Tip number eight, Use metal pliers to either remove the tip or put a new tip in, okay? And usually tips are referred to as nibs. When it's hot and you turn it off, usually you should let it cool all the way down in order to remove it. You have less of a chance of stripping the screw. Now, typically, you don't wanna to be touching it while it's hot at all. Most of the manufacturer instructions will tell you 
not to take it out while it's hot. So that is the number one recommendation. But if you are impatient and you're going to take it out anyway, then the way to do it is to make sure that you get pliers and you put it down at the very base of the tip, like that, let's see, can you see that? Yes, you can. And what you're gonna wanna do is very gently twist that off, okay? And then once you get that all the way twisted off, and it's gonna take some time, you get it loose, and then twist your burner to get it all the way off, like so. Then you wanna put this in a heat safe dish. When you are putting a new cool tip, I like to start it just real quick with my fingers, but it heats up super fast. So then you take your pliers and keep your fingers on the rubber parts, okay? And then come to the base of the nib and twist it back on. That's how I do it. If you have a wire nib burner that looks like this kind of a thing, then you're gonna want tweezers, okay? When my tools are brand new, it's really hard for me to get these out but since I've used them a lot, it's really easy for me to get them off now. But if I have been burning for a while, those are nice and hot. I'm gonna wanna use my easy pull tweezers and pull that off, okay? Tip number nine, only burn on dry, well-seasoned, non-toxic, non-treated wood, okay? Was I wordy enough for you? <laughs> if it's not dry wood, then it's going to have a lot of moisture in it and that's going to make the burning harder. It's going to make it more smoky, which is not good for your lungs. And it's probably going to be more sappy. And burning sap can also create toxic fumes. Some people are allergic to that. So you wanna make sure it is dry and well seasoned. You also want non-toxic and non-treated wood. That means you are not burning old fencing. You are not burning old painted barn wood. Most of these things have been treated with some kind of chemical, nice and deep, to make sure that they are protected from the weather. But your burning tool is going to burn that chemical. Now think about it. Would you burn paint on a regular basis? No, that's horrible. Would you burn a stain or some kind of treatment? Would you burn any of those chemicals? No, that doesn't make any sense. If you wouldn't burn it regularly, you shouldn't burn it for wood burning art, okay? That's a general rule of thumb. Safety tip number 10, keep your pets and your children away from the wood burning tool. And if your children are old enough, teach them safety about wood burning tools. I've got curious kids and they always find their way into my studio and they wanna mess with what I've got. And so I teach them safety around a wood burning tool. I teach them this is hot, don't touch this. When you're old enough, I'll teach you how, that kind of a thing. And that way they know when they're interested and when they're ready, I'm going to help them. Now, when my kids' friends come over, they don't know the safety rules. So the general rule is stay out of my studio and that keeps my hot tools away from the kids and away from the pets. So we just went over all of the safety tips. Now I'm gonna go over some of the safety equipment that I like to use in my studio, as well as some safety equipment that some of my pyrography friends and students love to use in their studios. I will also put links in the description so that you can get access to every single one of the things that I recommend. But before we get into that, if this has been helpful so far, go ahead and hit that like button and then hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss the next video because I plan to give you lots and lots more wood burning information. So a lot of times when you are burning, there is smoke that will come up and it gets into your eyes and it gets into your nose and it gets into your lungs, right? You don't really wanna be dealing with smoke, right? And I've tried goggles and all kinds of things and it just wasn't good. But what I have discovered is this. This is my adjustable art table and I love it for several reasons. One is that when I set this on my table, I can adjust it to any size that I want. Now, it's a little awkward right now because I'm holding it up for you guys to see. But when I set this down on my table, if I need it to sit taller, that's easy. If I needed to sit lower, that's easy. And it makes it really nice so that my neck doesn't turtleneck forward. Instead, it can sit back and tall, like at a really, um, at a healthier level, a healthier 
uh, position, an ergonomic position. And the nice thing is, let me set this down, is that when I put my work down, okay, I'm working on something, that smoke has a tendency to come up into my face. It comes up and it burns my fingers, right? But when I have it on a slant like this, instead of coming up into my face, it comes up in between my face and my work. It does the same thing with my fingers. While I'm working here, that smoke will come up in between my fingers and the work. And so I don't get the smoke in my eyes and it doesn't make my eyes water. I don't get the hot, hot fingers as much when I'm working on a slanted table like this. So this is really, really good for getting the smoke and things out of your fingers, out of your face. And it's also really good for posture. I also love that it's really easy to set up and take down. So if I don't want to work with that big table, I don't have to. The next big question that I get is how do you keep your fingers from getting too hot when they have been burning for a very long time? Because a lot of times this particular area gets very warm. If you are burning for a long time, that heat tends to go up and burn against the fingers, especially if it's angled straight up and down. That's one of the reasons I love that, that table because at an angle, the smoke automatically goes up and it does not hit the fingers quite as much. So another thing you can do, which is one of my favorite things, is to get a pair of leather gloves. I know they seem really cumbersome, but I have actually found that sometimes my hand, when it gets tired, it gets shaky. I have less shaking when I'm wearing the gloves. And so in that way, it gives me a little more control. It forces me to loosen my grip. And so my hand relaxes a lot more. And so interestingly, these leather gloves have been fantastic. You don't want anything too thick. I have tried welding gloves. I have tried regular, really thick uh, leather work gloves. And those were really hard for me to work with. These are just very cheap, uh, thin, leather gloves and these work pretty well. They don't stop the heat entirely, but they do really help. The next thing I like to use are these finger guards. See that? And what you do is you put that finger in there and it helps to protect the fingers from the heat. But I have found that sometimes still the smoke will come up in between here and still get my finger. And so my favorite way to use these is in combination with my gloves. And what I'll do is I'll put it on my finger and then I'll put the glove on and that's how I wear it. Now, I generally don't need guards for every single finger, just for the fingers that get the most heat. And for me, the one finger that gets the most heat is that middle finger. So I have the finger guard inside this glove, inside that finger, and I'm set to go. Now, some people really, really, really like to have a little more dexterity. And so you can also use these. These are salon heat guards. And you just slip them onto your fingers like that. And that's really nice. I did have to trim these down. They don't want to bend. And so as I would burn and as I would hold my wood burning pen, these would slowly start to slide off. <laughs> that was very frustrating. These ones force my fingers to sit flatter. And if I bend it, bend it, bend it, it, it doesn't want to bend with it. But they do work fairly well it, at keeping the heat away. So the next thing I recommend has to do with the kind of pad that you use on your wood burning pen. Okay, now this one's a razor tip. They typically come with a foam, a black foam. And then you have the Optima, which also comes with kind of a rubber foam. And then you have cork. This one is a Colwood. Now Colwood does also have some foam handles as well, but the cork is what's going to help you the most. At least in my experience, I have found that the cork helps my fingers with the heat the most. And there are a couple of different options you can have the really thin cork like this one, or you can have a really thick cork like this. So this is one of the Colwood fixed tip pens, and you can just slide that off like so. And you can take the bigger cork and you can slide that over the top. 
And this does a wonderful job at helping protect your fingers from the heat, at least that the pen puts off. Now, the big downside to this is that you have now gone from using a pen-sized pen to a giant marker-sized pen. And I do find that this is not as ergonomic for me. I prefer to have a thinner pen to work with. And so I don't typically prefer these, but I know some people love them. So the next bit of gear is for trying to keep the smoke away from your lungs, okay? Now I have this mask and this mask does a decent job. This is the RZ mask. This has a carbon filter right inside here. This is totally replaceable and then you can wash this outer shell and that helps to keep the smoke at bay um, or at least to a minimum. And this has been a great little mask. However, if you're going to do anything more serious like epoxy or something like that, this mask is not really gonna cut it. You're gonna need something more heavy duty. And I do have a mask that is on my wish list. I'm so excited because I'm going to get one. Uh, and I will put a link to that in the description also so that you will have access to it. You might get yours before I get mine, but I'm getting mine. And I am very excited about this mask. It's called the GVS Ellipse High Performance Gas Mask. And you can get this in small, medium, or large, so it'll fit the size of your face. And this is really good for things like epoxy and other things that actually give off toxic fumes. So this one will protect you from the toxic fumes, but it will do a decent job with just the smoke. The gas mask is for anything else that's heavier duty and it's definitely going to protect you from the smoke. Now I just, I do want to say, this is not just a regular old dust mask, okay? A dust mask might be helpful to some extent, mostly with like sawdust and things like that, but it's not gonna really help you when it comes to smoke. Smoke has a tendency to get through a lot of that, and so you want something that has a carbon filter built in at a minimum, okay? The next thing you can get to help with the smoke is a fan. For a long time, this is what I have used where I put this on the desk, but I would face it away from me. When you face it towards you, that cools off the nib and it makes you have to burn at a higher heat, which can wear out your, your nibs faster. Um, but the fan itself, you want angled away because that's going to pull the smoke into the fan and out and away from you. So that's really good. It needs to be strong enough to be able to do that, but not so strong that it shakes your entire table. <laughs> and one thing I didn't like about this was that it was kind of big for my table, but the smaller fans that I had weren't strong enough to pull the smoke away. So there's a give and take with a fan, but I have found something I really like better. And that is this carbon filter smoke extractor, okay? Um, a lot of people will use these for uh, soldering iron use and things like that to be able to pull the fumes in here. It's a fume extractor for soldering irons, but this comes with a carbon filter right here. If you can see that, there we go. That carbon filter is replaceable and it did come with a couple of them so that I could just replace it. This one is a Cotto brand, but there are several good brands out there. And this is actually a very strong little fan. And I will put this carbon facing me and that's going to pull it into the fan and then pull it out this side and away from my face. So this has been a really, really great tool. And actually this one was pretty affordable. You can get some very expensive ones where you can um, put an actual tube over where you're working. And I don't use that to me, that's too cumbersome, it's too industrial, it's too, it's almost scary. <laughs> but this one is perfect and it goes right on my desktop.
I highly recommend the carbon filter fan or smoke extractor for your desk. So that is my safety gear here in my studio. If you have any more that you want to share or things that have been helpful for you, feel free to put that into the comments below. I wanna hear what was the most helpful for you, whether it was a bit of gear or whether it was a safety tip that I shared at the beginning. I would love to hear any and all of those down in the comments. And then of course, if you are ready to up your game and start burning like a pro, I have pyrography courses for you. You can start with the free beginner wood burning art challenge. You can get that over at burnsavvyacademy.com and you can get started with the fundamentals today. And if you are ready to move past that, I have other pyrography courses for you. So just go check that out, burnsavvyacademy.com. And I will see you over there. I'm Jan Lizenby, your pyro professor. Thanks for joining me. Later, pyro.